and standing there as big as life smiling with his eyes says joe what they can never kill but went on to organize but went on to organize from san diego up to maine and every mining mill where working men defend their rights it's where you'll find Joe Hill. It's where you'll find Joe Hill. I dreamed I saw Joe Hill last night, alive as you and me. Says I, but Joe, you're ten years dead. I never died, said he. I never died, said he. Woo! Happy May Day, everyone. Happy May Day, everybody. Woo! Ed Green, thank you, Ed. I'm Don Villar, Secretary of Treasury, Chicago Federation of Labor. On behalf of the half a million union members, 300 local unions, half a million union members across Chicago, Happy May Day. Sister up there, yeah! <laughs> Happy May Day. Um, and 138 years ago, right? 138 years. I mean, much like some of these buildings were still up. Not this one, but maybe the one across the street. But this place symbolized so much for the working class. And you know, we last gathered here a year ago in the rain, in the cold, and this is so much better. Right. You're right. So much better than last year. But during that past year, there have been so many fights that have taken place. SAG AFTRA, the uh, Hollywood Writers Guild, right? Uh, UAW, right on. Yeah, UAW. And the fight that they had to bring the big three. And I know they're working to sort of make May Day where the, all their contracts converge. But, you know, and they're out there, absolutely. And the fight continues and it never ends. While it may have been 140 some years ago, the struggle's still the same. I mean, people are still being exploited. People are still being abused. And we are still fighting day and night and on the streets, you know, for workers. And by the way, I think SEIU just settled a big deal, right? Yeah. SEIU. And, and yes, SEIU in the house. And the fight, it never ends. Right, and, and I want to, you know, welcome, you know, Larry Spivak, Illinois Labor History Society, to talk us, to tell us more about the importance of this day, but also, we got two special guests this year who are adding to the plaque. So, Labor Day is so much bigger around the world than here, right? I, the Icelandic Labor Federation will be joining us, and so will the Argentine Truck Drivers Union. Here, Larry. Hello friends and comrades, workers in struggle, and I'm not going to do a lot of history. Many of you now know this history and that's why you're here. I'm here to help celebrate with all of you and to recognize that this is the 20th year that we have started dedicating plaques to this monument. In 2004, in September, the monument was dedicated, and in May of 2005, we dedicated the first plaque, which is on the other side, from Columbia, Coot from Columbia, and uh, by the way, they broadcast through their cell phone to 60,000 people in Columbia that year. Wow. You'll have a chance to walk around and look at all the monuments, but, um, if you look around, last year, the United Farm Workers, the, Latin, the Labor Council on Latin American Affairs, and the, uh, um, uh, the Chicago Federation of Labor had a plaque dedicated. Uh, the year before, the Coalition of Black Trade Unionists. But you look around, we have Japan, we have New Zealand, we have France, we have Sweden, we have Ireland, we have the Philippines, we have Turkey, we have Germany, the AFL-CIO, Mexico, and others, and more to come. But the first thing that I want to do, uh, let me just say, for those of you who don't know, 
It was in 1969 when the Illinois Labor History Society was in its nascent stages and people like Les O'Rear, Bill Edelman, uh, um, and so many others got together and said, we need to have a monument here. It took us 35 years of advocacy. And in 2004, the artist Mary Broger, is, uh, who is here today and going to say a few words, was given the commission and this monument was built. And in honor of the 20th year, Mary, uh, where are you, Mary? Come on up. Mary Broger, the artist. Thank you, Larry. I'm not a public speaker, but I'll try to tell you a little bit about why I designed the uh, monument this way. When the 10 artists that were invited to submit a proposal uh, designed, designed the work, um, we were given an extensive package of historical detail and images. And so some of the images, which came from uh, news clippings of the time, uh, influenced my design. But more importantly, I wanted to use the idea of anarchism, that you have to destroy something to build something, as, a, as an axiom for the idea. And so what you see are figures that are either in the process of building something or destroying something. And with that comes a cautionary tale about how you approach those, both those ethos. So um, uh, I wanted to emphasize that, that you, there's a responsibility in the power imbalance that can happen in that pursuit, those pursuits. So that's where it came from. But I didn't want it to just be a static monument. So at the time, I initiated an open worldwide call for plaques to come from uh, any entity that wished to uh, associate themselves with the history. And as Larry said, we have so many. Um, and I would like SAG-AFTRA, as Don mentioned, I would like to reach out to them as smaller, uh, smaller unions to add to it. And I, and I hope this will grow and grow and grow as people become aware of the opportunity. And uh, other than that, I would just like to thank Larry for his, and, and Nathan Mason of the Department of Cultural Affairs for their continuing stewardship of the plaque project. And that's it. Thank you for coming. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you, Mary. Mary came from California for these words. The first thing that we're going to do is the plaque uh, dedications uh, unveiling, but uh, each of the representatives will uh, speak and will unveil their plaque and then we'll go to the next representative and unveil their plaque. And if you read our newsletter or you heard about it, we have two groups. We have the Icelandic Federation of Labor here and we have the Argentine Santa Fe Truck Drivers Union. I would like to call up the Secretary General of the Icelandic Federation of Labor, Aaron Valdershuk. <laughs> My name is Aaron Valdsdóttir, and I'm, as he said, Secretary General of the Icelandic Confederation of Labor. Ladies and gentlemen, I bring you greetings from working people in Iceland. In Iceland, uh, over 80% of the workforce, workforce are active members of trade unions, both in the political and private sectors. <clears throat> Approximately two-thirds of the workforce, totaling around 130,000 individuals, are active members of trade unions affiliated with the Icelandic Confederation of Labor, known as ISE in Icelandic. While our unionization rate is quite high, we face challenges and per persistent attempts by vested in interests to undermine our collective efforts. As trade unionists, uh, we can never allow ourselves to rest on our laurels. I'm delighted to be with you today to unveil a plaque from the Icelandic Confederation. The plaque is an expression of labor solidarity while honoring the Haymarket martyrs were brutally executed after the political show trial 
aimed at curtailing the struggle for workers' rights and social justice. <coughs> the Haymarket riot on May 4, 1886, the bombing and terrible loss of life and the subsequent trials and hangings of four innocent labor activists is a major turning point in American history with regard to unionized labor and basic social freedoms such as free speech, the right to strike, and the right to assembly, to name but a few. Thus, the Haymarket Martyrs will forever form an important part of the social justice movement in the United States. Moreover, May Day itself, the International Workers' Day we are here to celebrate, was chosen in commemoration of historic events that took place here in Chicago in 1886. The Haymarket Memorial has thus become a powerful symbol of labor solidarity across borders and lands. <coughs> Albert Parsons, August Spies, Arthur Fisher and George Engel all paid their ultimate price for the commitment to a noble cause. The fight for the eight hour day, the right to organize, to collect bargaining, free speech and assembly. All four were killed by the state after a trial widely seen at the time as a travesty of justice while Louis Ling committed suicide shortly before his scheduled execution. Their legacy lives on, and today we honor the bravery by dedicating the plaque to their memory. May this plaque, like the ones already placed there, serve as a reminder of the sacrifices made and the impact of Haymarket Martyrs have had on American society. It is a symbol of our commitment to, to uh, preserving the memory and continuing the struggle for workers' rights and social, social justice. Long live the 1st of May. Thank you. Let's unveil this plaque. In remembrance of the Haymarket Martyrs, United We Stand for Freedom, Peace, and, ju and Social Justice, Icelandic Confederation of Labor. I would now like to call up the Secretary General of the Argentine Santa Fe Truck Drivers Union, Sergio Eladio, and he will say a few words and then we'll unveil their plaque which is right on the side here. Thank you. Bueno, mi idioma es español, por lo tanto me gustaría para que todos lo entiendan que lo lea Ricardo al discurso, así pueden entender que ya que la mayoría habla inglés, una materia pendiente poder hablar en inglés. Dear colleagues and friends of the union movement, it is an honor to stand here today in the historic Hay Market of Chicago, where the memory and sacrifice of those who fought for workers' rights converge. First and foremost, I want to thank the city of Chicago and especially Carol Ramsden and Larry Spivak for the immense support that through them the Illinois Labor History Society has provided us. Without their generous solidarity, this would not have been possible. On behalf of the Truck Drivers Union of Santa Fe, Argentina, today we pay tribute to the martyrs of Haymarket, whose legacy endures in every step we take in defense of our rights and dignity as workers. Haymarket is not just a physical place, but a symbol of labor resistance and solidarity. We remember with reverence the sacrifice of those who over a century ago rose in protest demanding fair and dignified working conditions. Their courage and determination remain a source of inspiration for us, reminding us that the fight for justice is an ongoing and must not be forgotten. Today, as we place this commemorative plaque, we affirm our commitment to keep the memory of the martyrs of K-Market alive. Their legacies engraved 
in every labor agreement, in every union achievement we have reached. They remind us that our rights are non-negotiable and that we must remain united in defending our dignity as workers. Our presence here in Chicago on May 1st is a symbol of solidarity between the peoples of Argentina and the United States, and it is also a symbol of global solidarity. We join workers from around the world to celebrate our accomplishments and reaffirm our commitment to continue the struggle for a fairer and more equitable future. We carry a torch lit by those who came before us, and it is our responsibility to keep it burning for future generations. In this world of rapid changes and unprecedented challenges, dialogue between, between, within and between our organizations must, must evolve. The old ways of doing things are no longer sufficient. The gap between leadership and the people has become as vast as it is evident. We need to bridge the gap between leadership and the working base, ensuring that every voice is heard and every concern addressed. Like during the Industrial Revolution, we face challenges that require innovative strategies and creative approaches. Once, it was the steam engine. Today, it is the digital engine. Just as this futile to deny technological evolution, we must not deny the evolution of our organizations and capabilities. We must be able to adapt and find effective solutions to today's and tomorrow's problems. The martyrs of Haymarket teach us that resistance and solidarity are our most powerful weapons in the fight for justice and equality. In the name of the martyrs of K-Market, let us call for critical thinking and collective action. Let us defend our labor organization, strengthen the brotherhood among workers, and empower every individual, individual to claim their seat at the table. Solidarity is not just a feeling, it is the force that propels us forward and enables us to achieve the freedom and justice we yearn for. Together, let us tell the whole world that so much suffering, so many privations, so much hardship among humans are not necessary. There is no need for arrogance, nor exasperation. We can and must do better with serenity and intelligence. This world can be better, not just for some, but for all. That is the true respect we owe to humanity. That is the true brother and sisterhood we human must seek. We must be able to recognize and repudiate the greed and seek an in vanity that unfortunately mobilized many. We must all be aware of the negative impact these mental and moral troubles generate. We must be humble enough to work together to point them out and heal them. It is impossible to have a better world if humans do not improve, if our organizations do not improve. Many talk about teamwork. Well, that is precisely that we, workers, unionists, unionists, politicians, businessmen, and all citizens must do real teamwork. This is the reality that humanity faces today. Either we save the boat together by curing excessive ambition and denial of others, or we will all sing together in the end. May this commemorative plaque serve as a permanent reminder of our commitment to the cause of workers and as an eternal tribute to those who gave their lives for a greater cause. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, muchas gracias. We're going to unveil the plaque over on this side and then Don will uh, begin introducing a few more speakers involved in struggles in the area.
You know, with having the Argentine truck drivers and the Icelandic Labor Federation, it shows the, the international movement, labor movement. All over the world, they recognize what happened here, right? It's in their history books. They're taught this all over the world. You know, isn't that amazing? But here at home, only activists and labor unionists and, and folks like the Illinois Labor History Society, they're the ones that are keeping this 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 story this this message alive and uh, w with the, with this artwork um, and in, as I mentioned you know the fight continues I mean we have ongoing fights today uh, and I mean I think earlier today SEIU 73 had a big rally at, at UIC right fighting for Woo! fighting for their contract Woo! so it it never ends uh, and I mean right now there's one long fight that we, we want to I want to recognize it, it's what's going on at the airport. Uh, flight attendants. We saw the flight attendants in the news during COVID getting beat up every day. There was there was a story about them getting getting assaulted for doing their job, right? In the meantime, I mean, flight attendants are just trying to they're just trying to work like everybody else. And for the past five years at least, they've been fighting for a new contract. Five years without a raise. Boo, right? Boo. And you know they only get paid when the doors on the plane close. All those hours that they're busting their ass, you know, getting people on, they're not getting paid. So, you know, I want to welcome, that ain't right, right? That ain't right. So I want to welcome uh, Association of Flight Attendants Communications Workers, Scott Pejas, president of the Chicago. Thank you, Don. I'd like to thank the Chicago Federation of Labor uh, the Argentine Truckers Union and the Icelandic Federation of Labor for standing up for the rights of workers. This is important. This is crossing borders. This is crossing oceans. This is crossing continents. Workers stick together and fight for what is right. Now in the airline industry, we're hamstringed. We're hamstringed by the Railway Labor Act. We can't just strike whenever we want. We have to be released to strike. This allows the companies to prolong negotiations, allowing them to save money, pocket money, double-digit uh, compensation to executives, $9 million raise for our CEO at United, while no cost of living for, as Don said, up to five years for airline workers. At United, we're 30 months into negotiations. We just went into mediation, and that's the process that we have to go through in order to get what we deserve. We don't get paid when we come to work. We don't get paid when we sit in between flights. We don't get paid when you're deplaning. These are the things that we're fighting for. And Chicago is a labor town. We have it here, but airline workers work globally. We're all across this great nation, bringing people from one point to the other. During the pandemic, we were necessary in order to be able to get vaccinations to the U.S. We flew those flights. We put our lives in jeopardy. And where are we now? Waiting. We're still waiting for a contract. And as Don said, that ain't right. But you know what? We need to make it right. Good, brother. We are stronger together. We are better together and Chicago is a labor town. We will succeed because we have power in numbers. Thank you. Thanks, Scott. And, and think about O'Hare and how important that is to our economy. I mean, to, so many people work there and the jobs, and the, it, it's, a, it's a union airport and we gotta support the union members, our flight attendants and everybody at the airport. We're working hard each and every day you know, to, you know, to put food on the table, a roof over their heads, and they're supporting their families. Um, you know, one of the other fights that we have going on, who's been to Walgreens lately? You know, and the, the, the struggle of the pharmacist, right? 
pharmacists are overworked and they're, they're underpaid. And right now, you know, the pharmacists represented by uh, Layuna, you know, they've been working hard for a new contract for the pharmacists. I don't, Jeremy, are you going to come up? Hey, hey, everybody. Happy May Day. Happy May Day. Yeah, so Layuna recently affiliated with the National Pharmacists Association. We represent over 900 or so pharmacists in every Walgreens in the Chicagoland area, and we need a better contract. They have been working without a contract since the end of May. So we have started the Fed Up Pharmacist Tour. If anybody's seen it, CFL has been pu publicizing it, posting it. We're leading up to our rally on May 10th at Walgreens HQ in Deerfield. So we would love to have your support out there. Strength in numbers, an injury to one is an injury to all. So happy May Day, we'd love to have you out there. And yeah, power to the people. Thanks, Jeremy. I, I want to recognize, you know, our news people here, uh, Nave at CWA at uh, Channel 7 and also at CAN TV. Journalism, you know, broadcast news. You know, I come out of that, I come out of broadcast news, spent 25 years as a news writer producer uh, in Chicago at WLS. So the importance of news and information and getting that message out is so vital today, especially when dem democracy is under attack, when we have so much bullshit being put out there. A lot of fake news. We need journalism. And, but you know what? Journalists are under attack, right? I mean, right now, our sisters and brothers at the News Guild, again, it seems like five years seems to be the norm, right? Five years they've been fighting for their first contract after they organized the Tribune down the street. Five years. Again, that fight. I mean, their fight is our fight. You know, an injury one is a... Right. Andy from the News Guild. Hey everyone, Andy Grimm from the Chicago News Guild. Yeah, it's actually, we're going on six years at Chicago Tribune. This will be the first union contract in the newsroom at that newspaper in 183 years. Brothers and sisters in Local 2 passing by, showing their support. Um, yeah, so, so I'm also proud to say that the Chicago Tribune had the first strike in the newsroom this year. We opened up the year with the strike, the first strike in the history of the Chicago Tribune newsroom in 180 plus years. Those folks are fighting hard. Their company's trying to take away their 401k match. They can't get anywhere on economics, and they recently were purchased by a hedge fund that has the highest profit margins in the industry. So everything you've heard about the newspaper industry going in the tank, they're still banking 20, 25% profits, and they just want to keep it. They don't want to share it with the workers. Um, I wanted to thank Don because Don supported us at that strike. CFL was there, and we had unions from across the city. They brought out scabbies for us. They showed up to support. We had Layuna, had their truck out there. Look, it's been, it's been incredible the kind of support that we have gotten. And also the state AFL-CIO got NABET and the News Guild onto a state panel that was uh, investigating a, the state of local news in our state. And let me just tell you, they found some bad news out there. It's 86% fewer newspaper journalists working in Illinois than there were in 2008. And those are the folks that are out there that are telling you what's going on in your community. In Chicago, we're lucky. We still have two newspapers, a bunch of new websites, TV stations. If you live in the suburbs, guaranteed, you probably have no dedicated reporter covering your schools covering your, your local government, and there have been studies that shown, and that means your taxes are going up, your cities cost, it costs more for them to borrow money. This is, we're all in this here. And I just wanted to point out too, that journalists have a long history in the labor movement, including Albert Parsons, who was a journalist. Uh, so one of our Haymarket martyrs here, and in fact, several of the uh, m martyrs were uh, journalists here. So we're back in the game here. We're, uh, we're going to need your help going forward to close out this contract with one of the worst hedge funds in America. And we've always appreciated the support from the labor movement. Thank you all very much. Happy May Day. Thanks, Andy. Thank you, Andy. And one of the other stories, speaking of news, one of the stories that we were hearing lately is the plight of the migrants. 
right? And the exploitation of migrants. And, you know, an injury, again, an injury one is an injury to all. And any, any forces that pull the value of workers down, it hurts us all. So we got to stand with them. So I wanted to, you know, welcome uh, our assistant brothers and ICER, talk about uh, the, the struggle they're going through. Thank you. Gracias, Dan. Thank you. My name is Artemio Arriola, and I'm from the Illinois Coalition for Immigrants and Refugee Rights. Thank you, thank you. Today is a May Day. We are here to celebrate, commemorate our martyrs of uh, Chicago. All over the world today, they talking about it. It's an immigrant organization. We are know the importance of May Day. And we came together a long time ago to fight them for workers' rights and immigrant rights. Right, lady? We talk in the street, immigrant rights, workers' rights, immigrant rights, workers' rights. And this is an immigrant organization. We know the, the, the things to work in together, like my brother is said, together we're stronger, right? Yeah, right. We, and we not want to them divided. For example, right now, we fight them for the people, they have 10 days to come arrive here, or 10 years, or 20 years, or 10 generations. We are working together and fighting for immigrant rights as a workers' rights. We're so happy to enjoy the movement of our, our to taxing the, the, the rich together. And we enjoy the uh, coalition, found our future, the coalition with the, with the labor uh, uh, unions. The, the, the thing on this in, in here in Illinois is try to be the more welcoming state for immigrants and help to the workers, taxing the rich and the uh, corporations pay the fair tax, fair share, and that's why today we have a campaign, we're working together, uh, and uh, I go pass some of the Q cores to you can text into legislators, uh, or you can use your phone and text the uh, tax signal, and the phone, the, the phone number is 52886, but it's more easy, we go pass the cures. Mi nombre es Artemio Arreola, and I'm from the La Coalición por los Derechos de los Inmigrantes y Refugiados de Illinois. Y el día de hoy celebramos a uh, nuestros mártires de Chicago, que alrededor del mundo uh, hoy celebran, hoy conmemoran, hoy marchan, o pelean por sus trabajos de, uh, y por sus derechos de los trabajadores. Por varias décadas, con el, uh, nuestros hermanos del movimiento laboral, Hemos dicho que los derechos de los trabajadores son los derechos de los inmigrantes. Y hemos peleado juntos por los derechos de los trabajadores y los inmigrantes. También hemos dicho que no tenemos que estar juntos para que no nos dividan y luchar por los que tienen 10 días, 10 meses, 10 años o 10 generaciones que han llegado aquí. Y juntos hemos hecho una coalición, uh, Found the Future, Fundemos Nuestro Futuro, donde pedimos que los más ricos paguen sus impuestos justos y las corporativas para que en Illinois los trabajadores y los inmigrantes tengamos programas. Les vamos a pasar una, un papelito donde está el código QR para que lo escaneen y envíen un email, un texto a sus legisladores para que apoyen estas legislaciones. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much, brother. Thank you, Artemio. Thank you. Um, <coughs> You know, uh, I wanted to, uh, bef be before becoming a, uh, a member of the NABE at CWA, I was an SEIU member working as a night watchman to put myself through college in the 80s. And I, uh, SEIU, by the way, some great wins from SEIU today. They just won a TA at Armar, Airmark, right? Yes, yes, after a long fight. And I, was, and I mean, we were getting ready for a janitor strike, right? And SEIU, they won some... Big wins for workers, right? Uh, and I see, uh, you know, Kathy and Carlos with uh, Workers United, and the fight they're doing on behalf of you know the Starbucks workers and and the workers over at Levi's and and all these. I mean, talk about that fight and what a that's been a long a long road, but yeah, but that was a great win also with Starbucks, finally getting some sort of labor peace. Uh, here's to the you know, Workers United and Starbucks workers, right? So we're getting some big wins as through solidarity and standing strong. But man, you know, we know that there's still continuing fights, right? Um, and again, 
I think, uh, what, are the stuff, what are the fights we have going on? Uh, Machinist, local 701. They have been on strike out in Austin for a while now. So please stand solidarity with them. Woo! Any other strikes that we have going on that I missed? You know, if not, you know, I think, uh, you know, this is another Labor Day, another May Day. Actually, I want to say Labor Day, because remember, Labor Day was supposed to be May Day. But then, because, hey, you know, we, we killed all those workers at Bowman, we're going to give you Labor Day as a national holiday, right? Yeah, that's bullshit. We have, well, actually, maybe we have two holidays. We got two, not one. We got May Day and Labor Day. Right? So, uh, and as we always uh, close out uh, on May Day, solidarity forever. Take it away, Ed. When the union's inspiration through the workers' blood shall run, there can be no power greater anywhere beneath the sun. Yet what force on earth's weaker than the feeble strength of one? For the union makes us strong. Well, solidarity forever. Well, solidarity forever. Well, solidarity forever. For the union makes us strong. It is we who plowed the prairies, built the cities where they trade, dug the mines and built the workshops, endless miles of railroad laid. Now we stand outcast and starve amidst the wonders we have made. The union makes us strong. Solidarity forever. The solidarity forever. A solidarity forever for the union makes us strong. One more time. A solidarity forever. A solidarity forever.